In Her Pointed Shoes, written and created by Bryony Morrison. This is Violet, a rather ordinary girl living a very ordinary life in an ordinary town, with one small exception. Violet has an uncontrollable desire for shoes. That's blue shoes, red shoes, shiny shoes, bean shoes, high shoes, flat shoes, in fact, Violet loves all types of shoes. One ordinary morning, as Violet passed her favourite shoe shop, something caught her eye. Entering the shop, Violet exclaimed, I want those shoes! A twinkle from the back of the shop called out to her. As if in a dream, Violet was drawn towards the shoes. Sparkling, multicoloured, high, glittering, pointed shoes. From behind her, the board assistant asked, Do you want to try them on? Yes, please, she replied. The assistant thought to herself, Here we go again, as she directed Violet towards a vacant chair and handed the shoes to her from the shelf to try on. Violet cried, I don't think they fit. It's the only pair we've got. I'm sorry, replied the assistant. Violet couldn't believe it. Only one pair in the whole shop. What would she do? They were just too tight for her feet, and she wanted them so very badly. She told the assistant, hold on to them for me. I'll be back. And with that, she fled from the shop, determined to find a solution. Running from shop to shop, she passed a counter displaying ribbons. While it was reminded of a recent article she read about foot binding in China, perhaps she could bind her feet. The age-old tradition of binding feet in China was officially banned in 1911, but was continued in secret until 1949. Chinese officials would forcibly remove the bindings from the feet of women during the years 1966 to 1976 and hang the bindings in their windows to shame them and their families. Foot binding was practiced across China for over a thousand years, but why it began is still not clear. It is believed to have started with upper class court dancers and later spread throughout all classes as it was seen as a sign of great beauty. One story tells of a prince who fell in love with a concubine, who had such tiny feet that she appeared to float as she danced. She was called the lily-footed woman, and other women began to bind their feet in order to emulate her movements. Whether this was the tradition's origins or not, foot binding became routine throughout the classes with the most beautiful women being those with the smallest feet. It was also looked upon as a way for girls to marry above their class and improve their social standing. Women would be restricted to their homes as mobility would be painful and awkward and often carried around in sedan chairs, of course, depending upon their wealth. Foot binding, although very painful process, was surprisingly inflicted upon a child by her own mother and grandmother. Between the ages of four and nine, a girl would have her feet bound, usually starting in the winter months, when the pain would be lessened by the cold causing numbness to the feet. Her feet were bathed, drugged with ointments and regularly massaged to maintain suppleness and prevent infection. The toes were bent down under the foot and bound into place. The bones would be broken to assist this process. 
or break due to the weight upon them. Eventually the arch of the foot became so concave that the heel would practically touch the metatarsals. The binding would continue for ten years to maintain their desirable length of three to four inches. At this size their feet were forced into three inch long shoes known as lotus shoes. Many women kept their bound feet hidden once the practice became illegal. They would wear extra long shoes and fill the front of the shoe with material padding. Some women were proud of the size they had achieved and clung to the old traditions that had been instilled upon them by their previous generations. Jo Farrell, photographer, found willing subjects hard to find for her book, Living History, Bound Feet Women of China. Since although having initial pride in their own achievements, there is now shame attached to the ancient practice. Families are reticent to talk about the subject so as not to bring shame upon their families and are wary of the Chinese government's reactions. Violet returned to the shop armed with bindings. First she tried the tape, not as easy as she thought. Next, Violet decided to try some string. She wrapped the string around her foot, but found that it was far too bulky to then put her foot inside the shoe. Perhaps ribbon would work, but even that would not stay in place. As she bound her foot, the ribbon was too silky to stay put. Her last resort was elastic. She bound it around her foot again. But it did not work. What was she to do? The assistant suggested that she gave up trying. Violet thought otherwise. No, I will not give up, she cried. Not as long as there is breath in my body. She picked up her bag, flounced to the door. I will be back, she promised, and left the shop. Later that day, as Violet was preparing a meal, she had a revelation. The Cinderella Procedure Cosmetic surgery is accepted in big business everywhere in today's society, with some things seem a little too extreme, such procedures as pinky toe amputation. The New York Times investigated cosmetic foot surgery in 2014 with several podiatrists in America explaining the assortment of procedures they perform so women can wear the shoes of their choice. Dr. Ali Sadiri explained how his view of cosmetic foot surgery has changed as he now realises that certain shoes give confidence to a woman they are part of her outer shell. He describes foot surgery as a fusion of medicine and fairy tale. So in his practice, a woman would have a Cinderella procedure and not a chevron osteotomy for hallux valgus. Many other podiatrists perform foot altering surgery, such as toe shortening, foot lift, toe liposuction, back pad augmentation, to name but a few. Cosmetic foot surgery has now travelled the globe and has found a growing market in both Australia and the UK. Little toe amputation has become more common with a fashionable trend for strappy high heel sandals. Sandals do little to support the woman's foot and some find it painful and awkward to wear them as their pinky toes protrude through the straps to the side. This often causes painful minor injuries when the toe is caught on external objects. Other women just find their feet too broad to fit comfortably into a pointed shoe. They see their only answer as a pinky toe amputation. That's it, and she smiled. Having recovered from her procedure, Violet returned to the shoe shop. They fit, she said, almost crying with happiness. It may have been a drastic step to take, but for Violet, her pinky amputation meant that she could walk proudly in her pointed shoes.